Hey, what's going on, my good people? Today, I bring y'all the story of Jelani Day. He was a 25-year-old ISU graduate student. He went missing and was later found dead in the river. We're going to break down the details. Come on, ride with me. On August the 23rd, Jelani's mother, Carmen, last spoke to him that evening. And the conversation was just about him giving her or sending her the money to pay his Aunt Ruby. And then he also told her he just wanted to hear her voice. And what's crazy is that that was the last time she would speak to him. On August the 23rd, he also spoke with this lady right here. She's a director at ICU. Her name's Kara. And she said that she was texting him Monday, Monday night and they were discussing his coursework and they had set up a meeting for August the 24th, which would have been Tuesday. They had set up a meeting. Now, I don't know what time the meeting was. There was a, a time of 745 floating around, but I'm not sure if that's the, the right time. Um, but what we do know is that on August the 24th, he showed up at the ICU Bone Student Center. He was there. This picture right here was taken of him on surveillance at 7.20 in the morning. Now, what's so crazy about this is that although he had a meeting that morning and he looked like he dressed for a meeting, he got on a button-up blue, blue dress shirt with some black slacks. He looked like he dressed for a meeting. But what's crazy is that he never made it to the meeting. We don't know why. We don't know what happened. But what we do know is that while he was there at the Bone Student Center, he did buy Starbucks. And, and that was confirmed through his bank card. But it was like, why did he miss the meeting? When he clearly looked like he was prepared to go to one. What happened? Now, when Jelani missed that meeting with Kara, the director, she sent him a text. And he didn't respond. I wonder what time she sent the text. Because what we know is that at about 9, 12 in the morning, that same day, August the 24th, Jelani was spotted on surveillance at a, at a place called Beyond Hello. It's a weed dispensary in Bloomington. So it's safe to so assume that he was going to buy him some weed. And as you can tell by this map right here, that dispensary is only about 10 minutes from, from the school. And he was seen leaving this place by himself. Hmm? Now take note of the fact that from the time we saw him at 7.20 in the morning, and he dressed up. Y'all see? He dressed up. So almost two hours later, being at the weed dispensary, he dressed down. Now, they did say he had an apartment off campus. So, to me, it looked like he may have went home and changed his clothes. Okay? But after he left that dispensary, he was never seen again. Jelani was scheduled for class at 1 p.m. that day. And Kara, the director, because he had missed that meeting, that morning, she showed up at his class, only to find out that he never showed up. So now she's worried, okay? She's contacted the police. And I, I want to say it was the campus police, but she contacted the police. And somehow, Jelani's mother, Carmen, got involved. And she officially reported him missing on August the 25th, Wednesday. On Thursday, August the 26th, Officers of the Peru Police Department responded to a report of a vehicle in a wooded area near Illinois Valley YMCA. And they said that when they arrived, the vehicle was located and concealed in this wooded area. So that means somebody was trying to hide the car. Okay? That's what that sounds like to me. Now, this wooded area where the car was found is right here. And it's near the YMCA. And if you look at this map, I mean, there's a wooded area around this YMCA. And not only that, when you look at the map from the last place that Jelani was seen at um, the weed dispensary, it takes over an hour to get to this YMCA where the car was found. That made no sense to me. Now, from the moment that Jelani was last seen on this surveillance right here, up until they found his car on Thursday. 
at this point, I mean, it's a short window. You got two days. So within two days, his car was found. Okay? And it was a couple things that came out after they found the car that had me scratching my head. And one of the things that came out was um, um, Peru police was asking for home surveillance video from neighbors near where that car was found. They believe that Jelani, Jelani may have walked down those streets on Tuesday or Wednesday. And so I'm like, okay, well, wait a minute. Because, you know, we heard all kind of theories. He was kidnapped. You know, uh, maybe he was robbed. But based off of this information right here, it sounds like to me that police suspected that he put that car there. I mean, because why else would they be talking about having neighbors check their cameras, talking about he might have been walking up and down the streets on Tuesday or Wednesday? That made no sense. It made me believe that they thought he left that car there and no one else. And then not only that, we found out that the shirt and hat that we seen in this surveillance footage right here was found in the trunk of the car. So I'm like, okay, well, I mean, did he take his clothes off and put them in the trunk? Did he change back into something else? I mean, he could have changed back into something else, but I don't see it too far-fetched to believe that now he just got on some shorts and some shoes. And it's hot. Guys walk around like that. That wasn't uncommon to me. So, now there's a full-blown search for Jelani. Okay? And one of the things that we found out was that when police tracked his phone, the last cell phone ping was from the dispensary. And I'm like, okay, wait a minute. So, he goes to the weed dispensary. And then, as soon as he leaves there, he's unreachable. His phone is off. Now, like I said, some people, you know, felt like maybe he was kidnapped or maybe he was robbed. But for some reason, it didn't feel like that to me. And, and then when I heard the news that his, the, the last cell phone ping was at the weed dispensary, I'm like, so he got his weed and turned the phone off. That's what it sounded like to me, okay? Now, for, for those of us who, who've been to college, we all know how, how stressful college can be. So it, it made me question a lot. I'm like, was he going through a thing? You know, did, I mean, did he seem like he was off? I mean, something just felt so wrong about this. And like I said, I know people was throwing out the whole kidnapping and, 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 and I don't want to jump the gun, but it just don't feel like that to me. You know, I, I feel like the movement that, that was made was made by him. And for whatever reason, you know, he decided to do what he did. And I just, I, I just had a lot of questions. I'm like, what was he going through? You know, we didn't hear from no girlfriends, no boyfriends, no nothing. You know, and, and so it was like, did he have any friends? I'm, I'm confused. You know, but even his mother was saying that this was not like him. And, and I believe her, you know, but us as parents, sometimes we don't always know what our, what our kids are going through. And even after they found the car, I mean, nobody had a clue as to what was going on with him until September the 4th. On September the 4th, an un unidentified body was found at the Illinois River. And it took them 18 days, almost three weeks, to make a positive ID. And come to find out, it was Jelani. Yeah. Then the question became, how did he get there? His car is, at, is, is over there in the woods by the YMCA. And he was found in the Illinois River. Did he walk there? Because don't forget, police was asking for video footage, talking about, did, did anybody see him walk in the streets? So I'm thinking, they think he walked there. And then it was like, okay, well... Did they find any clothes? What was he wearing when they found him? 
You know, you know, did they find his phone? Did they find any of his belongings? Listen to what his mother told us. The last thing that I've heard is that um, prior to them finding the unidentified body, um, that Jelani's wallet was found. Um, it was found on some street. I'm not for sure exactly what the street was. Um, there was an individual whom I don't know whom this individual was that claims to have seen an individual drop the wallet. Um, someone wearing red shirt or red shorts is unsure of what this person was wearing. Um, but they didn't tell the police until, I don't know, several days after this wallet was found. Um, there was a link, his lanyard with his uh, school ID was found um, close to the river where they found this unidentified body. Um, so we don't have a lot of information. Yeah. So Carmen told us that a wallet was found and whoever this person was said that they saw the person who dropped it and they had on either a red shirt or some uh, red shorts. I'm leaning more toward a red shirt, but, um, you know, but I don't know. And then she said that they found his lanyard. And if you look in this picture right here, he's carrying a lanyard in his hand. So that was found. And that was found near the bridge. Now, if you look at this map right here, walking from where he left his car to the bridge it takes about 25 minutes and somewhere in between here they didn't found his wallet and his lanyard now i know some people are thinking there was foul play and they may be right now i know that they're waiting on the toxicology report and i want to see what they find i want to know more details on the condition of his body because it took them a very long time to identify him. And if he was in that water for, for over two weeks, I mean, that could explain why it took so long for them to identify him. But me personally, I don't, I don't think there was foul play. But I could be wrong. Like I said, I'm going to wait for the details to come out. But um, I want y'all to let me know, what do y'all think happened to Jelani? So make the news, nigga, and watch what happens. If you make it over here on this channel, nigga, we on your ass, okay?